Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our uh, special meeting for February 28, 2023, 6.30 p.m. Uh, Mr. Bridger will be filling in for Ms. Burner this evening. Uh, if you would come over, please. Sir, Councilman Cook? Here. Councilman Lindsay? Here. Councilman Roadwald? Mayor Lowry? Here. Vice Mayor Grimm? I'm here. Councilman Bond? Here. Councilwoman Eggleston? Here. We have six members present. Thank you, sir. Tonight's indication will be done by Councilman Bond. Please. Our Heavenly Father, we uh, just thank you for this day that you've given us. We thank you for your love and your grace to us. Just ask you to be with us as we uh, discuss the different topics here tonight. Just watch over our first responders, our military, uh, everyone that's away from their families. Just keep them safe. Watch over their families while they're gone. Again, we thank you for this time. Help us to give us wisdom and clarity and thought as we discuss the different topics here today. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah, let's get warm by now. <laughs> At least nobody's sitting here complaining at the top. Yeah, Dan. <laughs> All right, moving on. No action. Committee reports and manager report. Um, we can kind of go back to this one as needed, I guess. But comments from members of the public. Yeah, if you want to say now would be the time. And if we need to, we can, as long as we don't get to. Oh, no. Oh, I'm making sure. Now, yeah. Now is your time. When, when the mayor gets done speaking, he had asked if he can come speak today. If what? He asked me earlier if he could come speak today, and I said yes. Just got to wait to appropriate time. So just letting him know it's about his time to get up. Is there a certain time you were wanting to? Well, when you got the comments from members of the public, I was just letting him know oh, that's okay. when he goes up. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. So, yeah, technically now would be comments from members of the public. But Point I know. order, Mr. Mayor. Sorry. Skip number five. There's nothing to do. I just have the room packed it up. Yeah, there's nothing on the agenda other than the bottoms of like the other business. Let me go find what I get where it's at. Maybe it didn't downgrade. Yeah, yes, trash and uh, parks and rec board. Yeah, oh, I do have the wrong one. Up. Sorry, sorry, sir. No problem. So <laughs> yes, comments from right members of the public. If you do want to speak now, now would be the time to go to the podium. Uh, with your name, uh, address, and try to keep it around five minutes if possible. Right behind you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Mark Vlasic. I live at uh, 212 North Smith Street, right over here. I just moved there about four weeks ago. Awesome. I just had two, two uh, comments I'd like to bring to this council's uh, attention. Uh, Smith, Smith Street's kind of busy. I, I don't mind so much the volume, because it, it is an easy access to Lake Street and Jefferson, north and southbound, you know, but the speed uh, is really a uh, lot of speeders. And a lot of the, the, the ones that speed the most that I've seen are, are delivery trucks, like Lowe's, Federal Express, and you, you, know, you must be in a hurry to get those packages out. But, um, I don't know what could be done. Maybe what I'd like to see um, is three speed uh, bumps, or I forget what the formal term is. Like one at Washington where it comes into Smith, one in the middle, and the one down at the north end by North and mm -hmm. uh, Villa. But you know, it's up to council. Maybe a speed limit sign. There are young children on that street, so. And uh, at the north end, on the west side, there's two disabled adults that live there that are monitored by the county. So just FYI on that. Okay. So if they, I know resources are limited law enforcement wise, but maybe some extra patrol landing or uh, maybe one of those uh, speed limit signs with the lights that flash, you know, that'd be, you know, remind everyone, 25. Yeah. I've seen cars on Saturday night stop up here at Washington and by the hit, that time they're in the middle, they're doing 
I'm going to guess 40. <coughs> anyway, if council could see the uh, come up with a uh, some extra patrolling sign. I think the part with, with speeding on, on Smith is, and I, I'm not going to lie, I've been guilty of, of speeding myself on Smith, is one, it's such a wide road. It's really wide. Yeah. And it's smooth. <laughs> so it's just, it's it's that perfect road to go a few miles faster. But, um, you know, if, maybe at the next uh, meeting, our next regular meeting uh, here next week, uh, we can discuss that with the deputies and see if maybe they can do a little extra patrol and, and see what kind of, uh, you know, what they've noticed in, in the past as far as traffic uh, tickets and things of that nature and just kind of okay like that. what about the speed bump that kind of out that would be i'm going to interject we cannot be we have to stick with what's was since it's a special meeting we have to stick with what the legal ad was advertised for right. and that's oh. parks and rec and uh even under comments from members of the public yeah because that's why we're advertised it's a special meeting okay. so mr velasic when you came in yesterday the other day i said yeah you can speak but it has to be pertaining to the agenda oh that's what i meant so your comments are very welcome. Council just really can't discuss it because that's not how the legal ad was put out. So that would be more appropriate for a regular meeting, as okay. Mr. Mayor said, and those are the first and third Mondays of each month. Um, so special meetings are only geared for what you are uh, advertising for, and the state says that you have to advertise and explain why you're meeting, and you can't really deviate from that. Oh, uh, sure, yeah, meeting. no problem. Well, I've already made notes, so we'll we'll get it, we'll dig into yeah. it at the next meeting. I wasn't aware of the procedure or policy, so. Oh no, you're good. Excuse me. You're good. You're good. Yeah. Uh, no worries. Okay, so I guess. I guess that's you, it. Yeah, you're welcome to still sit and listen to the rest of the meeting if you want. Yeah, you know, I, I got. I have to leave, but, uh, All right, please uh, make sure you come back to our next meeting if you can, which would be next Monday. Next Monday. Okay, yep. good. All right, thank you. And welcome to New Carolina. Yes, thank you. Mr. Vlasic is a very nice guy. I've talked to him multiple times. So very, very thank you for your time. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mark. <clears throat> I'm not going to lie. Hmm? I didn't know that. I didn't yeah, know when that. you do special meeting, legal advertising, you have to give the Right, I knew we day. were held to that, but I thought that the comments from members of the public were oh, still. He can open. comment all he want, but for you guys to entertain oh, and discuss okay, it I, okay, when your rebuttal, saying. yeah, that's the thing. He could have spoke all he wanted. That's right. what I said. Your comments are welcome, but as far as us discussing it, it has to be at a regular meeting because we didn't advertise for it. Gotcha. Okay. I don't think we understood what you said. I understood and I think he understood what he was doing. Well, I spoke with Mr. Vlasic. I think it was just a misunderstanding. It is confusing if you don't get into it. Okay. Yeah, regular okay. meetings, you can talk about whatever you need to. Special meetings, when council is called to a special meeting, you have to give the purpose, time, date, why you're meeting. And you can't deviate from that. Right, anybody else for comments? Uh, Janelle Zimmerman, 219 Prentice Drive. Um, I just knew they were bringing up about the garbage cans tonight, and I was a little confused about where the private citizens were going to have to put their garbage cans. And I was certainly hoping that it was just going to be back by their house and away from the street and not have to be in a certain spot behind your house or be wherever in your garage. I mean, this isn't a homeowners association, I think. I think sometimes it sounded like it was getting really particular to me. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we don't want it looking trashy, but I don't want to have to drag my trash cans into the backyard when I normally sit them back by the garage. And so I just wanted to make that point. Thank you. Yeah, we're going to get into that, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Janelle. All right, committee reports, non-resolutions, ordinances, none, other business. Uh, ordinance 2022-59, uh, placement of residential trash cans. Ordinance is attached. So uh, obviously we, uh, I think we, we let this die for lack of motion and we tabled it for the last time that this was brought up because there were um, concerns, as Ms. Zimmerman just mentioned, the placement. So uh, I guess we'll open it up if anybody has anything they want to start off with. No, I've got a few. Um, <clears throat> can we state our case first so you guys can base off of that, if you don't mind? Sure. So when we what looked at the, when we looked at this stuff, um, part of the reason why this code was changed because council has a push to clean up residential trash, residential properties. So when we looked at that, right now it just states that, and it has to be at the curb no more than 24 hours before or after pickup. 
Um, so what we're finding is people are leaving in the middle of the yard. Um, people are leaving wherever the case may be. Uh, just the sight of garbage cans are not great. They're unsightly. Um, we have uh, also passed legislation uh, detailing how commercial dumpsters are supposed to be screened. Um, so what we have here is a simple solution just to the side or rear of your house. Uh, that way they're not in your front yard. I think at the last meeting there was talks about, you know, putting it up by the garage door. That's going to create a lot of problems, a lot of instances where people may have a uh, very legal car in their front yard, in their driveway, that's pushed against their driveway, and now the garbage cans are at the end of that um, car in the middle of the driveway. So the goal with this is just to clean up, to clean up the image of New Carlisle. Um, and in the planning world, most of these ordinances do center around having your garbage cans to the side or behind your house or effectively screened. So that's just where we're at. That is a, a legislation we presented to council that we feel is best to move forward to clean up the general sightliness of the city. Um, but ultimately it's up to council and it died lack of motion last time. So we will do whatever council sees fit. Uh, but again, these ordinances are in place to clean up the city. We recently passed commercial stuff um, for them to screen their dumpsters. Um, and we just feel as though if we don't have a certain area front or to the side, the front yard is very vague and, and skewed and people can have these on the front porch. It's just not a very welcoming site with people driving down the streets. Go ahead, sir. If this ordinance stopped at 24 hours collection period, I'd be for it. I will not. Say, say that again, I didn't hear you. If this ordinance under N, garbage and refuge recyclables, if it started or stopped after the words no later than 24 hours after collection period, the next two lines disappears, I would vote for this the way it is right now. I said it last time, I won't vote for it then, I won't vote for it now, I won't motion for it, and I won't second it. Can I ask you why? We are not an HOA as Ms. Zimmerman, Zimmerman, Zimmer, I'll get it out in a minute, my brain's <laughs> uh, uh, stated. We are not Oakwood, we're not mm -hmm. Bellbrook, we're not Vandalia, we're not all these other cities, we are New Carlisle. Mm -hmm. We have a way of life in New Carlisle that the citizens has become used to. Okay. I myself has been here since 2009, and both of my trash cans are sitting right beside my, my garage door because they're on cement. Mm -hmm. If they blow over, I go out and pick them up. There's no trash laying around, nothing like that. Uh, I, for one, being a senior as most of our population is, can't get it to the backyard in the winter time, can't get it back out if we got eight inches of snow on the ground, although we haven't had that much issue. Okay. Uh, I just uh, think there's other ways to do it, uh, what you're wanting to accomplish. I know you have a complaint. I also know who the complainant is. And complaint. I mean, what you said the last time, she said you had a complaint about somebody having a trash oh, can in the yard. Yeah, there was one. I do apologize, Mr. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, but to piggyback on what you're saying, sir, one of the things that stick out to me as curious as your logic, if you could explain to me so I better understand your stance, is you're right. We're not an HOA. But we have other codes in place that we enforce that would indicate that we are an HOA. You have paint, you have, you have paint that is chipping that we'll tag for. We have tall grass that you'll tag for. <laughs> so what we have here is a solution where uh, the elected governing body is picking and chooses what they want to enforce. Um, but this is no different than any other code enforcement measure we do for exterior for property maintenance. So my suggestion is if, if we're going to be liberal with this and we're going to have a way of life that New Carlisle is accustomed to, then you need to take a look at our whole zoning code, exterior property maintenance. Because it just deals with the cleanliness and the sightliness of the property. So that's what that. So we can't, it's hard, I'm having a hard time understanding, you know, we enforce grass, we enforce uh, broken down vehicles, we enforce all these other things, but yet trash can't won't because it's it's an HOA feature or function. So that's what's getting that's what I'm getting at. Okay. Is that we have other things that we, we uh, enforce. Why would this be any difference? I think the way this is written being in the rear or the side yard, mm -hmm. if it's in the side yard you're still gonna see it in most houses. If you're on a corner lot, you're gonna see it no matter where they put it. Uh, then you would want to 
you know, put a fence or something up around it so you can't see it, which is another expense and burden on the homeowners, uh, especially the retirees. Uh, I think all of us up here are retired except for two. You know, uh, we don't make a hundred grand a year. I don't, I never made that when I was working. Uh, you know, I, I have limited funds to, to survive on. Fortunately, my home is bought and paid for, so I don't have to worry about that. All you have to do is pay taxes and stuff. Sure. Uh, most properties that I see are, are kept fairly well. We have some sections that aren't. But, you know, uh, you brought up uh, vehicles. I see vehicles in yards all the time. And they stay there day in, day out, month in, month out. There ain't a thing done about it. But you want to bust somebody for having a crotch can on their, by their garage door? I, I'm not, I can't buy into this, this ordinance, or uh, this, yeah, this ordinance. Sure. And I probably have exceeded my time limit, so. Mm -hmm. uh, so, great. you know, you all have my opinion on it. It hasn't changed from the last time this came up when we had the discussion, and I believe it did die for lack of an, uh, a motion. Uh, personally, I wish it would have been uh, voted on and voted down and been done with. But uh, according to our, uh, I'm thinking bylaws, but it's uh, charter. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, the drugs are still messing with my head, so uh, it can come back up in 90 days. If, it, if something is voted down or dies or whatever. But that, that's, that's my opinion on it, and uh, I will stick to my guns on this. And while we're asking for it, if council don't like this, to give us guidance of where to put them. So it's, it's not a us versus them mentality. It's just a, this is what we had, your administration had recommended. If council, as a policy-making governing body, don't want it, talk to your citizens, give us direction of where to go. But right now, as the code states, you can be anywhere but it has to be away from the curb 24 hours before or after collection. Right. So within that 48 hour time frame, it could be um, on the out, it could be on someone's front porch. And yes, people do put them up on the front porch. Really? You know, you can put them, you know, in the middle of your front yard. I you know. Well, you know what? Hey, you know, here's here, here's hey, my hey, and here's my hey, thing hey, with Mr. Bridge. Yeah. Come here, please. Hold on. So, okay. Was you finished? No, I mean, code enforcement's tough. I mean, people speak. I mean, you, you just, you will never be able to catch everyone doing whatever they do. People still drive drunk. People still speak. So I get you on aspect, but it's, you can't sit there and take the easy way out and say, well, I see this and nothing happens, because there are things happening. But things just happen so many quantity-wise quantity that it's hard to stay up on, you know? So um, we're very aggressive about code enforcement. It's just, unfortunately, there's just a lot of houses in New Carlisle that choose to live a certain way. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Mr. Leister. May I ask Mr. Lindsay a question? Yes, sir. If I remember correctly, your house, the garage is beside the house? That's no, attached to the house. And set back from the house? No, it, uh, my front of my garage and my house is straight across. I have like a courtyard. Then I'm thinking of someone else's house. Yeah, obviously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it used to set back, but the previous owner built a garage in front of it, in front of the garage. Well, memory is no longer one of my strong points. Well, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm just <laughs> What if we were to you? say they must be stored as inconspicuously as possible? Well, then you leave a lot of discretion. And that's one thing you don't want when you try to do these kind of codes. You want them to not be as, you want them to be as pretty straightforward as you possibly can. The moment you leave things up for interpretation is where it gets hairy. Unless you want to talk about pretty trash cans. Well, <laughs> um, what I'll say is, is, as far you know, you see a lot of people that come into town or move into town or have been here for a long time, and they say, "Well, this is my house. I, I should be able to do what I want with it." To a degree, I understand that, and I would agree with that to a point. When you move into any city, you it may not be a homeowners association, but at the same time. We are a homeowner association. We're actually a very large homeowner association that you don't pay into other than, than taxes. Um, you know, we, we what, just like you mentioned, we want our grass cut short. We don't want um, uh, you know semis parked in the yard and things of that nature. So, I mean, that's one of the things why I think some people move in the city. Uh, the people that live out in farmland and things of that nature. That's why they live out there because then they are pretty much free to do what they want. They can park and have a fire out front or you know, whatever it may be. Um, 
I, I'm not, I don't necessarily like this. I mean, I understand exactly what you guys are trying to do, or we are trying to do, not you guys. Um, I would like to see it tweaked a little bit in the wording because I understand the, the way they are, and I, I, I've seen a few people that do keep them right up against their garage doors, and they're always kept, you know, not everybody, but they're, they are kept nice and tight. Yeah, it's just how it works. They have things on the side of the yard, just like you guys. I don't want to keep saying you guys because I'm not trying to cater to you, but I understand what you're saying. What do you mean? Okay. Mine's mind right there. So I, I do think that they can be kept out front in a tidy way. I just think we need to come up with a, a way to word it and see how it goes. And if it doesn't go, you know, the way that we think it should, then we go back and tighten up the strings a little bit more. But I, I think to at least give it the option of saying it must be, you know, it can't be, you know, it can't be right next to your door and it can't be six feet out from the, from the house. It's got to be within a foot of your building or your, or your, your, your residence. Um, it must be, I don't, I don't know how detailed you can get into these as far as legal matters go, but it must be within a foot of your property after the 24 hours, if, if, like where you guys keep it against your garage doors. Um, it can't have anything stacked in it toward the lids open and things are flapping and blowing around and, and looking all trashy and things like that. So um, that's the route I would like to go to see it, um, to, to give it that little bit of lenience, but maybe put some verbiage in there that makes it a little, you know, that, that it has to be up, up kept, you kept up. Um, and then if it doesn't work, we revisit it again. So front yard, just as close to the house as possible. I mean, that's that's just my two cents. Sure. Let's, hang on. Anyone else? Did Mr. Mom? I, yeah, I, I think, you know, kind of what we're trying to find a balance between here is property and the rights and uh, you know, what is, uh, I guess, cosmetically acceptable to a neighborhood or whatever mm -hmm. is, is what we're trying to go after. And I'm a big proponent of property rights. I just, you know, for, for the government to tell me where I can and can't put my trash cans on my property, I, I feel it's kind of an overreach uh, by government. So, but, uh, I think I think we're dealing with a very small segment here. I don't think this is a widespread pandemic in our life. Um, what I would like to see is you know, I, I agree with the 24-hour thing. You know, it, you don't need to trash cans out by the street all the time or whatever. But I guess what I would like to see is okay if there are people that are abusing, the, you know, leaving the cans in the yard. What's wrong with trying to approach it from a, let's go talk to them, let's say, hey, we're just trying to have a good neighborhood here, do you mind helping us out? Sometimes a conversation is all it takes with somebody and they go, yeah, I can pull it up to the, the garage or I can do that, rather than lay a, a burden of law all the way across. Because I do agree with your point, Randy, that if you're going to have an ordinance, it's got to be, there can't be a gray area. It, it's got to be enforceable. Has to not have uh, anything in there that's left to interpretation of each side. So then all that is an argument. And so to avoid that, it does need to be clear cut. But um, I, I would like for us to find maybe a different option as far as looking at who the offenders are and maybe taking a different approach. I mean, I would be glad to go and, and knock on their door and say, "Hey, this is what we're trying to do with our city." not trying to overburden, you know, with, with ordinances and regulations, and just see if we can try that first before we have to register something. But that's, that's just my approach, my, my thoughts. But um, as far as this ordinance goes, the way it's written, I, I can't support it. Thank you, Mr. Bond. Ms. Eggleston, do you have anything you'd like to add? I, I, I agree with Mr. Bond, and I agree with you. I mean, it's... Yes, if you've got it sitting out by your front porch or on your front porch, that looks really tacky. But not everybody has the same structure. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You know, not everybody thinks the same way as I do. But I can't, as far as put saying, you have to put it behind your house or out of sight. 
I think that's it. So do you guys think enforcing the city's grass hang ordinance on. is overstepping? Hang, hang on, Mr. Judge. Hang on, just a minute. Are you finished? Yeah. Um, Mr. Cook, because you're the only one that hasn't spoken yet. Primarily, I think this ordinance is a little ambiguous. When we're talking about stored in the rear yard or side yard, then we're saying it can't be in the corner side yard. What if we were to say that, and I'll use the term, from the corner of the garage back three feet, five feet, whatever you make a determination, the container must be that much back from the front of the house. The other aspect I have of this whole situation is the fact that we've got garbage cans sitting in the street. I personally would like to see something that we put them either on the curb lawn or on the driveway approach. Oh, for pickup day. That's what, that's what you're saying. Like people are just putting them in the street. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Well, with having 40 some years of garbage experience, I have to disagree. I'll let it go with that. You disagree with the fact that we can't have them about the street. I have seen hauler after hauler pick up the garbage can from the curb lawn or the street approach, driveway approach. But this idea of having them out in the street, I do not go along with. Well, no, 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 there's, no one's, there's nothing in there saying that that's where they got to be. I agree, and I intend to say that something should be in there. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. Because I think, actually, at that last meeting, when, when this placement board pickup, I think Mr. Kitka, it might have been you as well, said that they usually are in the street, which, I mean, I don't think it matters. Well, the issue is when it's in the street, when you have a car here, garbage can here, they use an automatic arm, so they'll just, if they can't get to it, they're gonna pass But that, that arm is the problem with the hauler. And if it isn't meeting his specifications, let him get his ass out of the truck and pick it up. <laughs> so when I talk to the waste <laughs> management, you know? 100%, well, we're paying for a service. Yeah. Well, okay, so when I was talking to the waste management rep, all their new contracts for automatic, all the haulers are going to automatic arms. They're not having drivers get out of cars anymore. So that's an industry change that we just have to keep up with. We don't have in-house collection, so therefore we're bound by how waste management or Rumpke, whoever, choose to operate their business. Um, when I was talking to him, waste management has not bidded on places that actually are wanting people to get out of the truck anymore. So that's just a, that's something that I learned. I haven't executed the contract coming up. I haven't really gotten nuts and bolts of it, but that's just what I learned. And it's kind of makes sense. It does. It's a reduction on manpower for them, for sure. Um, and it takes it to automated, but there are some pros and cons with, with automated versus manual pickup. Um, sir. I just wanted to respond to that real quick. Maybe you can, I mean, that's something that I feel like should have be brought up in negotiation with them and just tell them, hey, you're bidding on this contract. We're asking for service. I know you want the automated, but we're expecting service is what we're expecting. And so if your guy has to get out of the truck once or twice a day because there's a trash can isn't where his arm can reach, so be it. If it gets out of, you know, if it gets out of hand, communicate it to us, we'll... We'll address that, but actually, that that's not even doable because 90 gallon cans you can't expect one person to lift one of those. Well, I'm not saying lift it, all they have to no, do no, is move it toward the arm. Oh, okay. yeah, 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 you're exactly right. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 yeah, I don't right. think they you're can right. pick up my can when <laughs> I, I, I can barely pick mine up. I, 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 yeah. I, I, you're right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that, but just those are things that we probably need to bring up to them and mm -hmm. just have some communication, yeah. So here is, I, I agree with Mr. Cook, that's, you know. Sure, um, so my experience with this is to be my one, two, third contract, fourth contract with this manager. Um, the more specialized we get, the more it's gonna cost your residents. So when you bid it out, and you bid it out for manual pickup at times when necessary, I think they're gonna put that into the price equation. You know, so that's just something we'll have to talk about as a council. I'm still waiting on the renewal rates to see what we're gonna do as far as continuing waste management for another couple of years or rebidding <laughs> it out. 
Um, but should we rebid it out, um, that's definitely uh, a council wants that to be addressed. I can definitely address that. But I'm just saying be prepared if the cost, if they charge us for that premium. Sure. Did you have something, yes. Mr. Weissman? This is a proposed ordinance, correct? It was an ordinance that failed, died lack of motion, so it's not what proposed are, anymore. What are we, but we have a current ordinance on mm -hmm. the Yeah, it just says it has to be at the curb or removed 24 hours. 24 hours either yeah. way. It doesn't, say where, it doesn't say where the trash cans can be for non-collection days, 48, 20 hours before and after. That's what we're trying to discuss. Like, the day before and day after collection, where do you store the can? Anything else, sir? No. So, I mean, that was Mr. Lindy's turn. <laughs> well, she, we got to do that. No, no, go ahead. The, if we could do something along the lines of, okay, you can't have it on your front porch, you can't keep it in your front yard, you know, because that's the problem, this, this can, and I've seen it, they don't pick them up, they're fell over, the wind's blowed them over, they're laying in the grass, mm -hmm. and, and uh, neighbors don't want to see the cans out in the yard. I understand that. Uh, sometimes hey, the wind gets to blowing pretty hard, mine blows over, but fortunately the wind comes out of the west so it blows it in front of my drive, in front of my vehicle, so, mm -hmm. so I have to move it before you need to get out of the garage. But if we could do something, like it can't be on the, on the you know, the front porch, or it can't be in the yard. You know, it has to be on cement or, or blocks or something. I, I don't see, I really don't see the problem with the cans, at least the ones that most of them that I see, and I'm gonna refer back to mine again, where mine are sitting. I don't see a problem with them sitting there, and, and quite frankly, a lot of the people on the street have the cans in the same place. Or they're sitting right in front of the garage doors, which they must not use their garage the only that I can figure out. If I had room in my garage, I'd put them in my garage. Then I don't have to put the bucket for the wind's blowing. And I wouldn't have to go out in the snow and throw my trash away. Uh, but I, I, I don't have room in my garage. And my vehicles aren't sitting outside for somebody to vandalize. And that mm -hmm. wasn't exactly what I thought, but that's what it came out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it seems like every time I leave one set outside, <clears throat> uh, I guess because I'm a moron, I forget to lock it, it gets ransacked. <laughs> so, but I mean, if we could do something like that, uh, like I said, the last two lines, I guess it's, looks like it's just one big long sentences, sentence with some commas in it, but the last two lines goes away and we can replace it with something, uh, a little less restrictive on where it needs to be. I'd rather see where it can't be than where it needs to be. You know, uh, like not on the front porch. I mean, who in the right mind would want a garbage container sitting by their front door? I mean, that, that in my opinion, that would be uh, unsanitary for visitors or people coming in and out the front door, unless they don't use their front door. I mean, but like, Peggy said, I think, uh, you know, not everybody thinks like we do and not everybody takes care of the property like some people do, you know. Uh, I just spent a fortune on mine making it look nicer, you know. Uh, I had a gutter, I just had gutters put up and I saw one of them was hanging and I go, hmm, why is that hanging? I just had that mounted. So I called the guy and tried to get out there and fix it, you know, and, and he was out the next day, I wasn't home or whenever he came, but he came out and fixed it. I mean. I personally keep my property in, well, I'm not going to win Mike's award for landscaping, but I do keep my house looking good, <laughs> you know. Uh, it, I'm happy with it, and, and nobody around the neighborhood complains about it, and nobody's complained about my trash can community. Because like I said, a lot of the people uh, in my area are elderly, we're all old, and we can't drag a can through the snow. And some of us uh, can't walk on, on the grass without hitting a hole or something and falling in. And trying to fill in holes is a job too. God, I've been trying since 09 to get them all filled in. They just keep preparing. Mm -hmm. So I'll stop rambling now. Thank you, sir. I'm, no problem, I'm just something to read another ordinance. Mr. Ramos, but, um, Greater mind. 
Sure. So what we're just trying to do is just establish some guidelines from council. Um, we just, I just, the administration wants to understand council. So when we look at this, it, it falls under steer for property maintenance. So it's no different than us enforcing grass or something like that. So it can, this can be restrictive or less restrictive as council sees fit. Um, but to piggyback what Mr. Bond said, we go to any extreme before we can issue a violation. They will talk to them, they will talk to our residents, we'll issue a door knocker, there's warning before it actually goes to violations. Um, but however, people just do not comply. And if we don't have something that we could tag them with, and put, there is no forceful thing that the end result is this, how are we gonna put people in this mayor's court to get them to comply? You know, so if government overreaches council's concern, then I think council needs to look at your entire 1460 and take a look at that and see what you think is best. My advice to you is make it as make it pretty restrictive because if not, it's going to get out of control and your town's not going to look the best from exterior property maintenance standpoint. So what Mr. Mayor said earlier, I fully believe in property rights. We all have them. But when you move into a city, we have a responsibility to, to make sure that the general welfare, safety and sanitation of your citizens are enforced and taken into account. It's different if you live in the township, you live more rural. We're parked and packed in here like sardines. You go up to Prentice, you go to the Northwoods, there's an R7, small houses five feet away from one another. Um, so again, we're just looking for guidance on how to do this, but I would invite council to look at the entire section of your exterior property maintenance code and take a look at that. If council think that's too restrictive, if that's too much government oversight, then we should probably look at that whole section and make sure it's what council wants in line. Um, but as far as this particular goes, we are open to whatever council wants us to do. We just need guidelines. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, uh, since Mr. Dave's Dave, here. Dave Bunton. He's our yeah. code enforcement. I don't know. We haven't even talked to you yet. So, <laughs> so you, how many years prior to Nicola have you done this job? I'm sorry? You were in Oakwood prior yeah. to here, correct? No, I'm not comparing Oakwood and Nicola, but how long did you do that job there? I did 28 years. Okay. So, um, I mean, what's your opinion? I mean, just your, not that you're the deciding factor, but what's your opinion on this particular topic? If we you don't have, mind me asking. We have a lot of houses, I think like you're saying, that a lot of, uh, when they convert the garage into a livable space, they don't use the, the, they don't use the driveway, they put the trash cans right in front of them, so it's always out there. We always will have the habitual, like you said, on Princess, constantly, constantly, Every week, I do door tags, I talk to people, I knock on doors. I hope I have a reputation of talking to people before I sight people. Right. But they're habitual problems. They continue to do it week after week after week. I could cite everybody in the court that doesn't do like this current ordinance is, but that means I might have 100, 200 people in the court weekly for trash cans still at the street. Okay. All right, audience, I want to ask you guys something, if council doesn't mind. If you guys mind if I ask them a question? Ahead. Okay, so, I, I, I know, I know where, I think we know where you guys stand. No, actually, I have a but, point that hasn't been mentioned yet. Okay, but well, you can, let me ask you this then. Okay, so let's just say, boom, we, we decide to council agrees to leave them up against the building. What would, in your opinion, looking outside, looking in for us, how do we address the ones who, aren't like you, the ones that leave them five feet out in the front yard. I mean, what do you think? Well, I guess it kind of depends on what the process is. I mean, it sounds like you try to do door tags, and you try to do, you, know, you try to mitigate the situation before it becomes a point of issuing a citation, but it sounds like even if you issue a citation, people still aren't complying. So what do yeah. you do? Exactly. If, if you get cited and you still don't do what you're supposed to do, I feel like the hands are tied. Yeah. You can't force someone to I mean, you can keep citing them, I assume. Well, right now, currently, there's nothing to cite. It just right. says... I mean, like, for, for any other type of violation. Then, oh, for, well, we send them to the mayor's court, and mayor's court will... So what she's saying is, like you mentioned earlier, there's mm -hmm. nothing in here yet that says they can't keep it out front, or it has to be no, tied I, I, in. Let's take tall grass, for example. Okay. So you get a door knocker or a door tag that says... Grass is a different situation. Because we have the authority, and we do, mow it. And we build the owner for it. Let's just paint, 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 yeah. paint, paint chip paint. Painting house. Okay. If we cited for painting house, we take them to mayor's court, 
that doesn't get the house painted. Correct. That just issues a fine. No different with trash cans. It doesn't get the trash cans moved. It just gives them fine, and they're going to turn around. Hopefully, they would get tired of fines and do it. But so that is the procedure. Then, if you don't come, if you get a citation, you pay the fine, and you still don't comply. You, get you go to court fine. again. It is up to the magistrate. So the magistrate can say you need to paint it, or if it's repeat <laughs> offenders, then the, the charge escalates. Something like that. Okay. But once it goes to mayor's court, our job is done. Right. We have put but it in I the mayor's court yet. Yeah. Sure. But that's does, does that start over if citizen you know Smith gets tagged, ticketed, and sent to mayor's court for his trash can? He goes, whatever, let's just say the magistrate charges him 20 bucks in court costs. He's done, he's done with court. He becomes a problem again with his trash can. Can this process the process can go over as many times as it needs to? It, every time he's charged it, it escalates to a different level of misdemeanor, right. different level of charge. Okay. So there's an increased fine. Okay. But right now we don't have anything to stick to him. Okay. Just, I mean, I mean, which, I mean, from a citizen standpoint, even though we're all citizens, what do you guys think? I mean, if we if we say okay, we're, we're okay with leaving out front, what stipulations do you think we should have? I mean, because there has to be something. It can't just be we'll, we'll let you keep them out front because we know it'll happen. We've got to be able to paint that particular citizen in a box if need be. If I'm saying that right, you know what I'm saying. So you've, got, got, so you've got guidelines to approach it. I mean, I don't think it would be a bad idea to put like a specific, like can't be within X amount of feet of the front door. Right. So that way, it, generally speaking, I know like in the Prentice Street crossing neighborhood, those houses are a lot smaller and a lot closer together than like my neighborhood or even your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, so you would have to kind of maybe judge based on the size of the property because 10 foot away from the front door of a house on Prentice is probably going to be different than 10 foot away from the front door of my house. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think it's a bad idea to say that you know you can't have on like 10 feet from the building. That's, that's going to be hard. <laughs> right. That's, <laughs> that's going to be difficult. Houses on Prentice, you can be 10 feet, going to be in the middle of the garage. So we took that in consideration. So the one thing that's applicable to no matter what size lot you're in, no matter what zone you're in, no matter how your house is built, everyone has a side or rear yard. And that's why we presented the side or rear yard. Because if you're five foot off of the front of the house, we're gonna take a ruler up there. I mean, it gets really complicated when you sit there and say this and that. So we did, we took all that to account. And quite frankly, most municipalities code say side or rear. So we're not unique in that. No, I, I, and that's what I, I've just seen three of them. Yeah, that says side or rear. So, side or rear. Yeah, so it's that, that's, the, that's the thing because there's the, the New, New Carlisle is unique in the fact that you can go on one street and two streets over, you'll have a completely different build house and it's a different size yard. You can go from an R7 to an R5 right up here, no problem. You know, and that's a vastly different shaped yard and, and house print. So that's the, when we were looking at all the possibilities before we came to this one, that's one of the things we looked at. Let's just say you want it 10, you can't be anywhere 10 feet from your door, 15 feet. Well, house on Prentice, that's going to be in the middle of the driveway. Right. So that's when it gets really sticky about a, a distance and all that stuff. Okay. Ms. Ms. Zimmerman? I don't know if this. I do not have this. I have a place to end up. I have a front door. I have a driveway. I can't put it inside the house. You have a driveway that goes upside your house, don't you? Mm -hmm. it goes so that's your side yard. <laughs> we wouldn't want you to. And he just said, even though the current thing is you have to take them back 24 hours, he can't slide it all in anyway because it's too many. So what is it going to do to even... Well, you still have, we, you still, we still have to put our best foot forward to keep things clean and tight. But, but he just said nobody does it anyway, and you can't slide them all on the floor because it's too many. Right, that we... So what good is it to even going to do? Yeah, you have, you have to put the rule in place. Okay. <coughs> so the other point that I have mm -hmm. is, is that if you do have a situation, I don't know. But in my neighborhood, the way the 
This is just the placement of right. not so much the aesthetics. Right. But my point being that you could enforce that they have to be on the side or rear of the house and they could still pile them up, they could blow over the main trash and blow out. Like, regardless of where you put them, mm-hmm. some of the issues are still going to exist. And we do, we have other codes in place that is blowing trash or something like that we can cite. So it's, this is just really just a placement. If, if it's blowing everywhere, that's something else we can address. But that's, it's really just the aesthetic placement and stuff. So, all right, mm-hmm. well, Council, um, what do you guys want to do? Say this thing. I think we need to word it to where we say where it can't be as opposed to where it has to be. Okay. Well, it sounds like like it can't be at the front yard, front door. It can't be in the front yard in the grass. You know, if it's blowed over, pick it up and stuff like that. I, I would be fine with it. Well, then you're going to have an ordinance that long. Right. I'll tell you what, let's, do, do, long let's do this. Um, it's true. Because there's it's no, fine. technically there's no huge rush on this. I mean, it's been the way it's been for a while. So, I mean, obviously something we're coming in the summer. Um, no. Hang on. Go ahead. Wait. Listening to this, it sounds like so the real problem is if the trash cans, it sounds like, are anywhere other than by the house. Does that seem right from this discussion? Maybe pretty close somewhere. I'm just wondering if we just say trash cans must be stored by the house. Yeah, but that opens up the front door. It it does, but honestly, if somebody wants to put it on their drag it up their front porch or whatever. Yeah, I would look. I mean, well, in that case, Ben, I've got plans for later. I, <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> but, yeah, I, I mean, to, to, when you start getting. Ver- a garage is part of the house, I guess. Mm-hmm. I, I, well, it's not attached. Be by the garage. Oh, it's not attached. Okay, yes. Yeah. It has to be by a building. I don't know. I'm trying to be. Do we have any quantifiable data for how, like, 
Well, that's what I was getting ready to say. Let's. Yeah. I'm not. We're not going to do a massive study for you. No, no, that's no. That's insane. I, it's really, it's really, it's it's cut and dry. Um, the preferred place is cider to rear the house. There's a reason why right. most municipalities are like that. It, it equally applies to everyone. Um, and then if I really do have a because the, the the perception of when people see trash cans is just not good. So um, that's just where we're at with it. But however, council, like I said, I just I don't want to sound like a broken record. We are there to do whatever you guys want us to do. This yeah. is just our recommendation. 28 years experience. I did it for multiple years. Very versed with other codes and other cities. So uh, this is our recommendation based off best practices um, of planning and zoning principles and code enforcement. Yeah, I'm gonna give Ms. Sexton the last word in the audience and then we'll wrap this up up here. Okay, in my neighborhood, <clears throat> No, because Dave gives the verbal conversation usually first. I mean, he just mentioned that. I, I mean, I, I see what you're saying. I would disagree, but that's just um, We actually put a legal add-in after every um, meeting that says what ordinances are passed. Council passes ordinances all the time. They just amended the bond schedule multiple times. Um, we just amended the dumpsters for commercial placement. And I've heard multiple people go into this um, with this discussion with these residential trash cans saying this, you have to screen them. There's nothing in this about effectively screening them from view. It just says to the side or back of the house. So there is no fence or no uh, privacy or no screening required if it's to the side of the back of the house. But again, council passes legislation. Yeah, commercial dumpsters. So council passes legislation like this all the time as far as that. But Emily does put a legal ad in. And yeah, how many people read a legal ad? I don't know. Mm -hmm. One last question. Hang on, guys. Uh, hold on. Council. What would you like to do? Uh, Mr. Mayor. Sir. I like uh, Mr. Bond's idea. It just has to be next to the building and to the structure, regardless of where they want to put it. If you want to put something in there about it can't be at the front door. But then again, you got people that once they're trash conveniently so they can throw it away, I guess. I, I don't know. I would not have a can next to my front door. Mm -hmm. so that's uh, the best route. Right. Especially in the summer months. I don't have a whole lot of trash. I shouldn't even have a trash can. Okay. <laughs> I could use the neighbor's can. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Andrew. Uh, I would like to, um, me personally, I would like to just, I mean, I, I kind of agree with what we all kind of stated. But I don't necessarily have an issue with it being out front as long as we can tweak the wording a little bit to kind of protect those who live next to, you know, people that do keep them out front somehow. Um, I don't want to move forward with anything tonight. I'd like to do a little bit more reading into it before I, I, I can't think of anything I've ever done anything. You push the team, sir. First of all, I can't believe we've been an hour talking about trash cans. <laughs> yeah. Second of all, trash cans are not ugly. Those green carts. Yeah, it's pretty green. They look decent. They're a trash can. So, I've seen worse. Yeah. 
<laughs> you seen some of the dumpsters? Well, at least they're all the same. Yeah, go ahead, Mr. Vice Mayor. <laughs> They'd still look good. Um, yeah, having them sitting in the yard, laying over in the yard, upside down in the yard, whatever, mm -hmm. that's not good. But uh, any place you can put it close to the house should be, should be acceptable. Mm -hmm. Now, my trash cans are on a side porch. It's the only place I can put them without going down two or three steps and then over a mound filled with flowers. Uh, I just down, down the porch, down the ramp, boom, that's it. You can still see them from the street if you look close because I have quite a bit of side yard between me and the side line. But I don't think my trash cans are unsightly. I have pretty trash cans. I've been washing them in the wintertime or some of them. Well, our recommendation at this point in time is not change the code at all. I would just leave it as is. Um, 24 hours at the curb, 24 hours not at the curb, and then we'll take it from there. Because I think if we do anything other than side or rear of the house, it's just going to get confusing and complicating and hard to enforce. We so don't right want now, someone going out there saying, all right, it's got to be five feet away from this. We're putting our staff at danger to actually have to go up to the house and measure stuff. Um, and New Carlisle people do not like being told what to do with their property. Um, but again, I will stress that we are in a city. Mm -hmm. It is the council's responsibility to ensure these codes are impacted. <clears throat> and I will invite council again to look at the entire exterior property maintenance to make sure that's in council's line because we are going to be ramping up and people are going to be going to mayor's court for chipped paint on their house. And you're going to come across an example where you have a 90-year-old lady who has cancer and now we're enforcing this code. So that's the stuff that we're looking at, you know. So if council wants to be that progressive community, where you let your residents have fair game of their property, that's something we can address. Um, it would be a textbook example, and I don't think it would end up very well, but we gotta have something in there that we can enforce when needed. Um, and I just think if it's not clear, side or to the rear, it's gonna just cause some confusion, not only for us, but also for the user as well. So if council's not gonna make any change, we would just recommend leaving in that how it reads now, and that's 24 hours before or after placement, move it back from the curb. But the way it reads now in the last day, I mean, either one of the last day. So if he, uh, Joe, I'll take the question. Okay. Mm -hmm. If Joe Citizen has his 90 gallon trash can in the middle of the yard, it's tipped over, and it's there repeatedly every other week, can we write them up? Can we tag them for that? Right now. Trash. If it's blowing around. It, but, but, not yeah. for, but not for the can being on the yeah. side in the very yeah. center of the yard. Let me follow up on you. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Would it be possible, <clears throat> or it, <clears throat> excuse me, or is it possible if you find a can laying in the middle of the front yard, could Mr. Dave uh, stop and say, hey, you know, uh, can you get your can out of your yard? Can you put it on the concrete? Under what, it, under what law? Under what ordinance are we enforcing that? Uh, the good citizen ordinance? We don't have that, and that's, yeah. no, no. <laughs> Well, maybe we need a good citizen. Okay. <laughs> just be, just do, just be a good person. <laughs> just be a good person. Even good that's up for interpretation yeah. nowadays. I mean, that's that's a forty-five minute conversation. Right. But yeah. well, I got you. I'd say unless somebody wants to make a motion to do any sort of changes, that we let this continue the way it is, as Mr. Bridge has suggested. And if there's any, if there's any further discussion down the road or suggested changes we can do it then. So, I'll make a motion that we table this ordinance for 30 days. What are we going to do in the 30 days? Are we going to revisit it after 30 days? Revisit it in 30 days if the administration comes up with some better wording. Council comes up with better wording. That's, hold on, yeah. hold on. That's our job to come up with the wording. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree. It's our job to come up with the wording and, and give direction to the to the for the yeah, legislative policy. That's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we're open. But, guys, and but we I would agree. Worry. I would like to have more time. I mean, I'd just say just let it ride and yeah. let us do our research and read. But yeah, mm -hmm. whether well, it's I in, will, I will second his motion. Table for 30 days. A so specific time frame. A motion by Mr. Cook to um, table it for 30 days and seconded by Mr. Vice Mayor. That we only give us a certain deadline, we have to get it done. 
Okay. And Actually, I'm just going to... This gives us a deadline to revisit it, not to get anything done. Well, true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to go down the line, so don't start yeah, with me. Go ahead, sir. All right. Uh, yes. Councilman Cook. <clears throat> Vice uh, uh, Councilman uh, Lindsay. Well, you are rattled, aren't you? Uh, no, I'm out of my element when I do this. We no. all know this. <laughs> you said no? Or, or you, no? Okay. Um, Mayor Lowry. Yes. Uh, Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. And that passes one, two, three, four, five to one. So, so we'll revisit this in, in 30 days. Correct. So that'd be, let's just, let me see what that date turned out to be, because I can make note of when I need to bring if, this If I make note of the council meetings, I'll be back in 30 days. Because <laughs> <laughs> this shoulder is killing me right now. <laughs> so it'll actually be brought up at the eight, first meeting in April. Okay. So that'd be do, 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 April 3rd. And it gives council time to do homework. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Please call me if you guys want any uh, uh, guidance on research or where to go. We more, 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 more than happy. If you need yeah. trash, call you. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, uh, moving. Well, okay, we'll just let it go. Was you good, Mr. Bridge? <laughs> all right, moving on to Thank Parks you. and Recreation Board bylaws are attached. So, <laughs> I'm going to have to let Mr. Dave leave. Does anybody need a break? No. <laughs> Restroom's right there. All right, so uh, I guess we're here to uh, talk with um, the Parks and Rec Board and go over any fine tuning of their bylaws that the council or the administrator or the board themselves see need to be changed. Anybody have anything they want to start with? for you and has worked in the past continue doing that and yeah. then maybe when this next contract comes out we'll figure out where they want it. I don't know. Can I ask what you're referring to? The placement street or curb? Well I understand that but where are you saying that waste, man waste management puts out stuff that the city directs them to post out so where did waste management say to put it somewhere in the city? Okay, so that the contract's drastically changed since then. I think did you, we saw bags when you moved in here? Did you, have, did, you, did you still have to buy yellow bags when you moved in here? You got an option for bags. How long have you lived in New Carlisle? I think they were just getting rid of. Yeah, that's many. That's, that's been, a lot of contracts. That's been at least 10, 10, 12 years ago. Yeah. But that's what they said. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I see nothing at all wrong with them. All right. <laughs> what we need to do is bring that under the. Okay, back to the Parks and Rec Board. Like we Mr. Bridge, did you have anything you wanted to say? No, this is. I'm not just asking. No. Nope. All right. Ms. Actually, yeah, I would just prefer. I just, I, my overall recommendation is they need to have everything approved to council before they come to the ministry. Other than that, again? everything approved by council. Before they come to the administration, that would be my only two cents. <laughs> that <Sure. laughs> okay. you go ahead. It was probably your idea. All right. There's a very simple solution to this. We undertook the board of zoning appeals, if I remember right, back under the council. I would strongly suggest that we do the same thing with the parks and recreation board. I have here a listing of the items that they do want to buy. And I have an agenda. For example, they want to do the Easter egg hunt, the Memorial Day service, 4th of July, 
three or four bingo events, phone fancy, frenzy, ice cream social, Halloween event, concerts in the park, movies in the park, <coughs> Santa and Mrs. Claus at the shelter house. So I firmly believe that in order to provide our citizens with what the Parks and Recreation Board should be doing, we have given them a budget and am I understanding that the amount that is on these purchase orders are within their budget? Um, they're within their budget, but I don't know if it's a really a very responsible expense of taxpayer money. Beg, beg your pardon? I don't think it's, Mr. Cook, when you, are you referring to the Amazon order they tried to put in? Yeah. Where they're getting like four, five, six first place prizes of 40, 20, 30, 40 bucks? Some of them to keep in mind. So last year, our Easter egg hunt did not go according to plan. And perhaps I should have explained this ahead of time. I, I guess the reason why I'm asking is because it seems to me that the Easter egg hunt is going I didn't know anything about purchase orders. I didn't know anything about the tax division. I don't know what is and is not acceptable in terms of the auditors and ethical and all I don't know that. Sure. But last year's Easter egg hunt was mm -hmm. successful but had it. It was a good start. And in an attempt to make up for our shortcomings last year, we wanted to offer more first place prizes, if you will. How many first places are there? Well, last year, well, so last year, all of these grand prizes that were given away, I paid for out of my pocket for this exact reason. And it was to the tune of about 600 bucks. I didn't ask for reimbursement. I'm not going to ask for reimbursement because <coughs> I just kind of felt like it was the right thing to do. I had the money to spare. It's, you know, yeah, we get the kids candy, but any Pretty much anywhere you go, um, when they have an Easter egg hunt, they have like a, a golden egg or a prize ticket inside the egg. You get something better. So, um, the fact that last year we had far more kids than we ever anticipated, so some of them didn't really end up getting there in the eggs. A couple, a couple parents the first thing, I'm like, hey, I think I'm going to eggs. And I'm like, sorry, it's got a dog eat dog out here. And then the oldest group of kids didn't get any eggs because somebody wow. went and the people yeah. jumped the gun and went before they were supposed to do and all the eggs were gone by the time it was time to get the So last year we did like three grand prizes per age group or three age groups. This year we're going to do, you know, four or five. And in terms of what we show, you know, we're not, ideally what I like to Give away really awesome stuff. Yes, I do it. Um, Peter Heights does theirs. They stop uh, it's, it's actually a nonprofit um, organization. It's called Peter Cares. Um, and last year they gave away over six thousand dollars in prizes that were donated by the community. They were giving away bicycles. They were giving away um, big dragons and Cincinnati Red tickets. They were giving away hundred dollar bus tickets to um, the, the the jump. Uh, no, the, well, yes, but get air. Get air. Yes, the trampoline thing. <coughs> so, <coughs> do I see this grow into something like that? Yes. Um, do I understand that we are nowhere near that? Also, yes. Um, probably the part that I took the most issue with is the fact that Mr. Bridge said you can't buy stuff like that and give it away because you can't guarantee that it's going to be a citizen. That's true. What kind of community outreach is that? You know? Are we going to check IDs at our events and say, hey, you're not from here, you can't participate? Like, that's not the way to <clears throat> try to foster community. Because technically, I mean, the way that I look at it is, and I understand that it's city limits, but all of our kids are in the same district, whether they're from Park Lane, whether they're from Medway, whether they're from Donaldville. They all end up beginning to come from high school graduates unless they go up So to me, hosting an event for kids should include all of the kids within our district, even if they are non-residents. Like, I don't feel like we should hold that against a child in terms of what they may or may not be able to win if they come out and 
Let me go ahead. A uh, couple, of, couple of dozen questions here. Uh, first, you stated you spent $600 or so last year on prices. Uh, I don't know how the rest of the council feels about that. I don't think any board of this city should be spending personal money to buy anything with. And if they do, it probably should be approved by somebody before they do it. And then it should be reimbursed for that money. Uh, second, as far as citizens, what, what Mr. Bridge told you about, we don't know if it's going to citizens, he's absolutely correct. Because the citizens is the ones flip the bill on this. Our taxpayers are. So if, if people from Park Lane, uh, Donaldsville, whoever, you know, that goes to Tecumseh, maybe the better way to do it would be go to those city councils, uh, township trust, or, yeah, trustees, and have them write a check to help put this on and then make it a true community and not just a new Carlisle thing. Because when you start paying, using a city's tax dollars for anything that may not stay in the city, uh, I'm not real sure I'm gonna rely on Mr. Bridge, maybe he knows. I think there's laws against that. <laughs> He's gotta be real sketchy with it. No one would bat an eye if you spent 200 bucks and you give away slap little small prices. But when you have this big of an Amazon purchase going in there and you're $30, $40 first price, numerous big prizes, that's gonna raise red flags. So we have to approve these at the level. Colleen has to approve them. So years ago when Mr. Reynolds was, I think mayor, uh, he wanted to make a donation to the food bank here in New Carlisle. We actually yeah. had some issues with that because we could not guarantee that that money ultimately was going to go to our citizens. Right. So um, the auditors, we did get their opinion. Um, since council did approve that, they chose to look the other way because that was their end state auditors. That's their discretion. Our new auditors may come in and look at that and be like, whoa, that's a pretty excessive amount that you're spending. If this would have been more in line to what I think most cities do when they sponsor it themselves, and I want to piggyback on what you said earlier about Huber Heights, so I'll get to there. The reason why they give those big prizes out because it's done by a nonprofit, not on behalf of the city. So I think that aspect of it, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So one thing that stood out with this is just a sheer dollar amount of the numerous prizes that were going out and not knowing where that money is going to be directed at. That's simply it. And really the biggest solution, the easiest solution to this really is not having Council take over the Parks and Rec Board. That'd be a lot of work for you guys, because I think the Parks and Rec Board do, generally do a great job when they put on the events. They, it's, it's speaking back what I saw last week. This is the, really the need as to why a council member needs to sit on certain boards and be a part of that board. One of the council members should sit on this Parks and Rec Board. Someone should sit on the planning board. That way there's a little bit more control. What council approved once it comes to us, it's fair. Now, we're always going to be judgmental of this, because Colleen or myself have to approve this. And if we get found, there's, they could, the auditors could sit there and say, you personally have to pay this back. It actually happened to our finance director in Yellow Springs. Not even a mistake she did. She actually had to pay back money out of her own pocket for a mistake that was made. Not, she didn't do it. But since she's the financial representative of the city, it was on her. Mm -hmm. So that's just where it comes down to. It's just, I think more checks and balances need to be in place because at the end of the day, this board is a subset of council. What you guys talk about and go, and I think maybe for certain events you set budgetary amounts, you know? Um, other than this particular issue, there's really, um, it was an Easter egg candy a while ago. But I will admit that one thing, I, I, I've not educated her about what you can and cannot do. Um, so for us, we look at this as excessive, where someone who may look at it differently may have a different viewpoint. I don't think there was a malicious point coming, uh, a malicious bone with this. I think it was just lack of not knowing. Um, well, I, I assume I, said, I like, yeah. Do I need to take this to council? And, you're, and you specifically said, no, council approved your budget. You already have funds available. You can submit the purchase orders. So I guess if that, if 
Okay, so I'm just going to sit there and say I did say that, but I was assuming that you understood what that meant. And I thought that you and, yeah, I, if, well, anyone who thinks spending this much taxpayer dot money, I just assumed you would be able to equate that to be something reasonable. This is not reasonable. This okay. is acceptable. So here's my suggestion. My suggestion is that council just abolishes the Parks and Recreation Board because, number one, we can't get participation. As it stands right now, we are not going to have any events this year because we cannot get anyone volunteer. We have the doula that is not a forum. We cannot hold meetings. We can't do anything. Let me, before you get any farther, because it was kind of what I was getting ready to ask. Um, so you have to have five members, right? That's, we don't have to have five members. Right, members. right but I mean, the, the max is five. Max There's is five, five seats. And, three and, four. and you've got two? Okay. So my suggestion is the council does away with our connection meeting. I will do like certain other citizens of the city of Newfoundland and I will take on doing events on my own. Um, because apparently that is perfectly acceptable and there is very little, if any, red tape that you have to jump through in order to conduct whatever it is that you want to do without <coughs> all of the oversight and restrictions. And I understand that it's government and I'm not faulting the fact that there are rules and restrictions and policies and governance involved. But I am not going to continue to stress myself out trying to do good things for this city. When everybody else can do whatever they want with seemingly no issues. It's easier outside the box. Correct. I, so right now, Paula Blue's got permission to close Main Street for whatever they're doing for their independent market. I don't know the details that went into it, but apparently it wasn't really difficult. Yeah, they wanted to close the street. Who? So they, they're well, having a night market. Is doing a winter yeah. market. And we're also going to ask for uh, liability insurance. They're going to name us as additional shirts. So I encourage you to start it yourself, but we're going to ask for liability insurance that names us as additional shirts. So when you have a little event out here, someone gets hurt. The city's not at harm. So you can, we are more than happy to entertain that, but it's not just that easy as and, far as. And, and they would also, as a private citizen doing, say, an Easter egg hunt, would they not need? Uh, a permit or something to do that? No, and that's no. Uh, we are actually working for we. Hold on, hold on. No, we as far as what? We, for what? We have. To we are working on an event permit. We've got it. We do a permit, and we've got a letter from ODOT to shut the street down. We have to do it every year, and we carry over a million dollars in insurance every year for our event. We're talking about a lot of cities have an event permit. Like if you want to do right, and we started event. doing that. No, the city itself. You don't. The city does not issue permits for a special event. I thought we did last year. That's an ODOT permit you get. That's from the Department of Transportation. Okay, we're saying from the yeah from the city okay, for a okay. while. I apologize. So it's required for this. If you want to do this, you got to do that. Uh, addresses what you can put on the street poles. Okay, stuff gotcha. like that, like an internal application. And okay. you're right because My right bad. now it's the Heritage of Flight's been doing it for so long. It's just it's just automatic. You it's know, been going on for what 50 years or something. <laughs> But another area of concern I want to bring up is this board has had members before. This board has a very high turnover rate. Can I ask why that is? This right here. That is not. And you have said you sat in on meetings in which the former board members were like, well, we can just do this, and we can just do that. We can get volunteers to rehab the Madison School, the front wing. We can get volunteers that can come in and can get rid of all of this, and we can make it into a community center. You sat in on those meetings and you know that there were pipe dreams that were not realistic and that everything had to be reined back in to be understood of, hey, you can't just go all over the and doing I just think oh, hey, for a Parks and Rec board to go in and undertake redoing, that's a little bit out of the scope and reach of a Parks and Rec okay, department. Got, um, I got a question. I'll let you gentlemen go first, Mr. Cook. I guess I'm sitting here a little dumbfounded. Brandy, what are we talking money? $2,500? Uh, for what? For the, what you want on this purchase order. Uh, 90% of that on that purchase order is you know, at this point. What is the total? Uh, $3,453. Okay, 3500 $3, right, $3, right, $3, right, $3, right, $3, $3, If this is the case, then how in the Sam do we turn around and spend $15,000 on fireworks that we don't know how many of those people are citizens, Park Lane, Tecumseh, Donaldsville, wherever? Folks, I'm very frustrated with this. Mr. Cook, that's, not, that's an apples to oranges comparison. Why is it? Why 
this is not comparison. What? Damn it! What? We are turning around so, and hey guys, calm down. Damn. Go ahead. We're turning around and Just spending not, city taxpayer money. Please do but not address me like that. Okay. No, 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 hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Stop, 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 stop. Hang on. What am I insinuating? Guys, stop. Hey, guys. Yeah, stop. that's what I said. Very logical. Just bridge. That's what it is. It's just a question. Well, everyone, stop. Let me ask a question. Okay, she, and I'm, correct me if I'm wrong. You said you suggest to abolish it. Can we actually even do that? Yeah, yeah. You really want that? I'm just trying to simplify it here. It depends on um, how much guidance I can get. That is awesome. Mr. Like, that's probably the best route. Mr. Lindsay. I, I'm just, I was gonna say, if I, that's what she really feels is best, then. I, I don't think council should make a snap decision tonight to abolish the Parks and Rec Board. Uh, I do understand from what I'm hearing from Ms. Mollett, I just don't think your last name. <laughs> And uh, I, don't, I don't remember. Sexton. There you go, Mrs. Really Sexton. <laughs> you know, uh, they, they are, what I'm hearing is they are not wanting to do this anymore. Oh, I absolutely it, want to do it. I mean, as Parker Rep. Board. Well, not, I, I don't like having my hand slapped of, you can't do that. Well, you didn't tell me I couldn't do that. Well, maybe. And in this issue specifically, my, my biggest Point was, I submitted the first order, and I heard nothing. Mm -hmm. No critics. Come to me and say, hey, I got the first order. This happened. This is why it's not cool. These are the guidelines. We have to Just, just a minute. Was these denied, Mr. Bridge? Yeah. It doesn't show that on here that it was denied anywhere. No, because it didn't go to that. We just never even processed it. Okay. Uh, the and looking, hearing all the conversation, uh, I kind of agree with Mr. Cook on the fireworks. We spend, I think we got fifteen thousand dollars budgeted for this July. We don't know who's in the city watching these. In, in my opinion, it really does not matter because you can actually see these from miles away. You don't have to be in the city to see them. Uh, I was coming back from Tip City a year, two years ago, and they was going off, and I thought, oh, those are pretty. I wonder who's setting off fireworks. And as I got into the city, I go, oh, it's the city setting them off. Wow. You know, and I was almost probably halfway between there and Tip City when I saw, saw them in the air, and I go, wow, somebody's got a nice display. But anyways, the... I, I would not want to just to abolish the Parks and Rec Board tonight. Uh, the if if the two ladies do not want to be part of the Park Park and Rec Board, they can verbally resign tonight. We still have the Park the Park Parks. and Rec Board in our in our realm of things. And at some point, if volunteers come forward and they want to be on this then maybe maybe we can revitalize it uh the uh, running the risk of making you thoroughly ticked at me okay and we've been getting along great for a year now so it's <laughs> <laughs> well no it, i i have talked to some ex board members and what i hear is they leave because you dominate everything and dictate you and Mrs. Sexton. Really? And, and that's why they left. So I've heard too. So I don't know, I'm not gonna get into that because it could be a personality thing. I'll submit that resume tomorrow. So I mean, you, you, you know, if, if you don't wanna be involved in this and the city's park and rec board and you want to do things on it, and I agree with you, you probably can go get donations from them from, from uh, business owners. Can you do it under the guise of the city? No, and that's what's gonna, give them, that's what's gonna make them give them money. 
you, you can ask. They probably won't do it, though. They probably will, but I would caution you on doing that. I would set up a, a nonprofit if you're going to do that, seriously, to protect yourself. Mm -hmm. Because if you do it as an individual, you have no accounting. They have no accounting where this money is going. I mean, you could be putting it in the bank for your retirement at, you know, another 50 years, uh, 40 maybe. Uh, <laughs> but I'm, I'm just saying that there's a lot of complications when you're collecting money. Uh, and, and you don't have it set up properly or legally. So I would consult with whoever you need to consult with, but I would set up a nonprofit. It isn't that hard. You, you can do it on the SOS site. You can get a tax ID number. You can do it all at home on your computer and have it done. And I can have it done in five minutes for you. I don't know how good you are with the SOS site and the IRS, but you know I, I've set things like that up. It doesn't take long. So. We don't need a written resignation. I think actually we do. Don't we? Do we need a written? I, I, I think, think we do. do we? Okay. Okay. If we need a written resignation and that's your desire, then you know you can give us a verbal tonight and then follow it up with Mr. Mayor, because uh, that's really where the resignation should go to is the council, and then the mayor or vice mayor will forward it off to the city manager. If you want to send it to the city manager, he can send it to us. How, well, however you, you want to do it. Why I'm and why I, I, I did not get into it. I yeah, I did not get into it with them. I wrote this. Yeah. I wrote it. I was one of the two people responsible for bringing this board back to start with. I still have the original file saved on my computer from 2017 to 2018 when I drafted this document, the original, because we were told, well, we don't really know what parts of that does. In, right from the uh, in 19? That's the date. That's when these. Yeah, that's when these were passed. Other issues yeah. taken precedence and council and legal and all that. Okay. So yeah, and so you probably know these better than anybody since you wrote them. I mean, I I usually know things I write better than anybody that reads it. So, but anyways, uh, I for one. If you do go ahead and resign, the both of you, I don't know. Uh, I appreciate what you have done. I appreciate you writing this. I would not encourage council to abolish this Parks and Rec Board. If, if we do nothing but leave it there and it goes dormant, we still have it. If at some point in the future it is ever resurrected. Now, now I'm going to ask the city manager his thoughts on what I just said about keeping it and letting it go dormant. I think this particular section has went from zero to 90 in a matter of seconds. I think that we've had some buried uh, issues that we needed to get out, we got them out. I will stand by what I said before. I think they do a good job when things are working. And what we had tonight was a meeting of their bylaws, not so much their purpose mm -hmm. of trying to do. Right. No one wants the, the parks and records. I think they just need better guidance of what to do with council and how that gets approved. Like again, they report to you guys. They do not report to the administration. So I think before, I think all the things really need to be done, and I take a note, is it just needs to go to council. Like if they go and present the Amazon purchase to you, you guys can talk about that purchase. You guys make the motion, you approve it, you bring it back to us. It's out of our hands. And if Colleen wants to approve it, she can or I'll approve it. You know, but right now, when they just bring a blind thing for almost $3,500 of prizes that are, I'm sorry, in my opinion, an excessive of what should and, and, and this an excessive of what you should win for an Easter egg. And there's some things on there that we talked about. She needed the microphone, the Easter egg, the popcorn machine. That's fine, but it's the prizes they're giving out for winning. That's the issue. There's a lot of material there that needs to be checked for. So I don't think it should be the ban. I don't want them to go anywhere. I just think it needs to be better regulated by bylaws, and that's why we're here. Okay. So, so what we I think what what we need to do in the bylaws. Uh, is change it to where anything that the board wants to do, they bring it to us. I mean, that's how it's, it's, I mean, that's how it should be anyway. Well, but the, what I'm understanding, it, it goes to through the city manager to us because that's, it was written, it's written in here. Although these has never been approved, have they? What, these bylaws? They, they're approved by ordinance. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, back in, okay. Okay, now specific to the ordinances, I'll tell you what I think we, what, what I, I wrote it, and I took other cities, um, 
with a lot of things that don't apply. Um, things they should think we should get rid of. I guess we can keep 278.01, that's fine. Um, probably get rid of 27802. I don't think that's necessary. Uh, just a moment. Uh, that has no, I think that should stay. I don't think that has an impact overall overall stuff. It's just a vision statement. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. I looked over these and really, I just think there needs to be a whole section added about processes. Well, yes, but like 27807, 27808, 27809, and 10, that is not true. Anyway. That's not true. I mean, the board. It's not always updated real well. No, it's everything's true. updated. The planning board has guiding principles. The board of zoning appeal has guiding principles of what they got to do. Um, and and it's not duplicated on here because some boards have a three-year membership. Some have a two. Some have a four. Uh, well, but as far as like your residency, all that is yeah, all that's yeah, yeah. yeah. But as far as Anything like terms. I just don't on I, an open conversation. Okay, here, let me, hang on, let me ask a question. Sure. Because I haven't been in your guys' meetings. So what is, what is, okay, so from your standpoint, it sounds like this needs more clarification on policies and procedures, or procedures of proceeding. I think they just need to go to you guys first before they come to administration. Is, is that in here? Does go. it say? No. No. Okay. No, not at all. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you guys, here's the deal. Back to Mr. I know you guys have said, well, they have the budget to work with. I have a budget to work with, but if I spend over a certain amount, I got to come to you for additional legislation. Right. If I want to give someone a raise in the management level, you guys approve it in the budgetary at the beginning of the year, how much you can pay for wages in a, in a realm. But anytime we need a raise, I still have to come back and get it through legislation. But, no, but let me ask you this. So mm -hmm. let's say that we put it in here that says that their board has to come to us with this or whatever it may be. Um, you know, we're, again, we're not we're not finance people as far as the quality of the finance person is calling us. So she brings us to us. Okay, we all say, yeah, okay, it looks fine. You're doing this Easter egg hunt. You want these? We pass this, but then Colleen, you, and, and potential of the auditors have an issue with it. Who's the final stopping in this? Is it you or is it us? I mean, I know we can pass it or agree on it, but if it's something that's an ethical purchase, you know, it's not an ethical purchase or how you were talking about it earlier. Who's the final say? Is, is it still Colleen or is it us? We'll go through it and we'll approve it until auditors pull that and they make a real deal of it. You get nailed on your audit for it. Okay. So if this was pre presented to us, we could take it to an open meeting because we have to do an open meeting. Mm -hmm. Council discuss it. Colleen, we could have Colleen on hand say, what do you think? Of, I mean, right? Does that well, you can go, I, I can address Colleen's issues. I'm her boss, so I could discuss that for her. But, um, but that would be something we would have to do in an open session. Oh, yeah, you'd have to do an open session as a whole. Right. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Sir, yes, let's, let's start the table, please. Would it be improper? for a city function to give away donated planters. I'm sorry? Would it be improper for a city function to give away donated prizes? No. Oh, like, so like a, a, someone donates to us and we give it away. And you just won uh, $5 courtesy of Joe's painting and yeah, it's lighting. Not, we're just, we're just the middleman on that aspect. It's not really our resources that are going out. So it's acceptable. Absolutely. Yeah, that would when you try to do that, I will explain to you. They say it's city function, the city has the budget. Right, right. You can make donations that have to be reported through Colleen, and then they're not available for use until it's included in the budget for the following year. Yeah. It's been a whole thing. That's okay. not. One of the things that I want to add, okay? <laughs> Lots of things on that purchase order will be used for, you for multiple events. Right, like the popcorn machine. The yeah. popcorn machine, the bingo. The issue uh, was the, the thing. <laughs> yes, I just showed you. Yeah. Some of the games and that type of thing were things that we thought as and at the time 
The what? Oh, okay. okay. And we ordered these things because she really thought that it was a good idea, and I did too, that during the fireworks or during the Easter egg time or whatever, these games could be played by these individuals. Instead of everybody saying, I'm going to go, I'm going to go. Fireworks are the big draw in the city, always have been, since it's been back. We have thought that we could set up some games, kids would be more entertaining. Same thing with the Easter egg hunt. We want to buy things to entertain the children. <coughs> now, I do not want to leave this board. But, I'm not going to sit here back and forth. Not going to happen. I'm not doing it with you. I'm not doing it with you all. But something has to give. Now, <clears throat> Central Bar meeting, no one attended. Not a single town person, not even a public. Okay? We tried to get times to the The one thing that I want to make perfectly clear to every one of you, our last member left December the 15th. <clears throat> I personally called your city manager and told her that she was leaving. I asked him that day to please put up the notice for an empty or full position. Do y'all know when that got done? A couple weeks ago. Um, 2 14 out of 23. Two months later. Okay? My now, question would be why? <laughs> um, because I had time to do it, and as we can tell by the results, Facebook is not really effective at getting uh, volunteers, and quite frankly, I don't report to her. Uh, not to be rude, but I don't. Like, I, I, it was on my to-do list, and I was going to do it with the other vacancies, but anytime we put anything on Facebook, we don't really get responses for volunteers. Well, Facebook isn't, in my opinion, a place to be advertising for positions. Even if you put it on the city's Facebook w w website, right. people just don't volunteer like they used to. Yeah. Yeah, people don't know mm -hmm. turn like these. But, you know, I think one of the things we need to, if you're going to throw me under the, uh, 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 comment on my time in this, I had other things going on. There's a bunch of developments going on I'm working on. So, yeah, it, it could have been up sooner, but there's a lot on my plate. And yeah, knowing, and knowing, and again, and city. knowing, and knowing the, what I get from it, as far as the results from Facebook, it really so was time my plate. Okay. okay, here we go. Let's, here we go. Hold on, stop. So, let's stop. We can't, we can't go on this way. We're all okay. in circles. I say we call yeah. it and figure it out later. I have one last thing to say. One more. I love sitting here and serving the community. But like I just said, the round and round has got to come to a stop. I don't know what the best way to approach this is or the rates. I was getting together at a meeting or something, but we don't know the processes. That is what has been the stalemate. Like. I have talked to several members, and it's like, I don't, and I'm sorry, I'm not doing something with you, but sometimes here at Open Mess for me, I don't really know. So who do we ask next? Yes. Need more guidance. That's just how it is. As far as who to go to, what we're allowed to do, what we're not, what we can do, what we can't do. That everyone wants to talk about. We're getting in the Let me explain something to you. Some of our other members are going to get a little crazy. We've got four or five dollar names. Oh, for my God. Yeah. So, it, yeah, somebody has to be a little bit controlling because you guys yeah. hear the boat. Yeah. And then they'd say, well, why can't we just do what we want to? Why can't we just, why can't we get a storage unit to store our carpet stuff? We have a budget that doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so these are the problems that we've run into. The only thing that she's ever trying to do is, and even me, I said, 
you can't do it this way. So that's going to go on. So be it. <laughs> exactly. Just, and in the end, it's us people sitting here that we need to be folks, okay? We need guidance, and that's how we need it. We take care of it. I'm not saying at this point that I'm going to be done. But guys, what choice do I have? At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Okay, hang on one second. Janelle, real quick. I'm not going to, you know, go against how you personally feel, but I, I'm not going to sit here and, and say that they've been, been yelled at. I mean, I'm not no, saying that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I take that okay. back, but they just get right. told. You, you That's a badge of honor. <laughs> you gambled. That's a badge of honor. They did spend it last year. Hold on, wait, wait, stop, because we, okay, so what it boils down to is guidance and clarification on procedures, how to move forward with any set, um, you know, event that you want to do. With. To make changes to this, does it have to be done by them and voted on them, or can we change it and present it forward? It, it we, passed by an ordinance, so council has to approve their bylaws. Okay. No matter what amendments you have to yeah. do. This board reports to you. It is codified in your ordinances. Okay. We can, they never got yelled at. They never got told they couldn't do anything. The only issue was with this past Amazon. Other than that, it's been fine. All the events they wanted to do, they've been fine. It's just this Amazon purchase has just got. That's okay. what's really we, we, we can make any changes to these bylaws that we want as sure. council and approve it. Mm -hmm. And they basically live with what we say. Right. They, their membership which they don't have enough to even to vote on anything right. because there's only two of them, they need three. So we, so at this point, we, the council, along with them, become the board of Park and Rec. So anything that council decides to do to add, amend, or delete from these bylaws, we can do, and it's done by ordinance. And, and that's as simple as one of us making a motion that we're gonna do this and getting it second at past. If, if I'm not correct, around the ordinance, huh? Amend the ordinance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Amend the, it's amending the, the ordinance of 1913. And you guys even have the ability to go in and say, instead of a five person board, it could be a three person board. Right. That way they can uh, condense, uh, they can what, condense business. What recourse do we have to try to make this even more difficult for people to comply with the ordinance? Because it's not going to be Well, you have your quorum at that point in time with two. Okay. That's what I'm getting. So it would at. make it easier. Yeah. Uh, it would, it, it would it allow them to do anything. Now here's the concern. I have an issue with three per, three member boards. I do. So I think it allows for not saying you guys do this, but for two people to sit there and just outvote the other. You take I have an issue board, that county uh, commissioners are set up like that and only people on hours. there. So that's that's something you do. Nine but however, in the light that we right. have, this is not the first time someone on Facebook and no one uh, uh, responded to it. Every we just can't get anyone to fill a, a, a vacant position, whether it be on the human rights yeah. board. Planning board. So by reducing how many members put it three, they can run with it and then get everything approved to you guys. I think that's the best way to move forward. Like I said, we got our concerns out, make it a three person board, amend it, have them get everything approved to you guys, and then but done. Mr. Yeah, hold on, hold on. Mr. Cook, hold on, Mr. Cook. Can we place two members of council on this board? You and Grim? It's up to you guys. I, I, My, I, uh, <clears throat> I mean, that gives them the quorum. I, I, I would say, I would say. Hold on. Mr. Cook, are you finished? Yeah, I'm finished. I mean, so you were asking if anybody wanted to volunteer, basically. But does that count? I have to look into that. You're going to have to change your things. No, we have I don't to change think. everything. Janelle? I, I would say, I would make the motion don't to be move able to parse the rec board? five no, members. I'm I'm okay, well, fair enough. I will make the motion as far as the members to make it a three-member board. We can do that tonight. No. That, 
No, you have to no we have, we'll have, to, do it, so we'll have to do it Monday at the next meeting. That will give these two the ability to at least function as a board and attempt to get something done. And that all also depends if Ms. Mullet resigns tomorrow or not. We'll also, we need to put in there who to report to. Right, and and that would be to us. us. Oh, I've got it crystal clear now. And then, and then once Thanks. we approve something, then it goes to the city manager. But they also, the administration, if we approve something, well, we are their bosses, so it's all back on us that we approve something. It's not right. Right. You know, you guys approve the mayor's court report. You guys just should approve like a motion for that. You know, that's how that's how you would do that. Right, but but I, I would go through here and, 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 and pick some of the parts. Yeah. And there's cheaper places to buy a lot of this stuff, <sighs> quite honestly, than Amazon. Okay. And next time, hey, hey, whoa, 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 guys. Yeah, well. <clears throat> okay, hold on, please. Mr. Bond. Mr. Bond. Yeah. Ben Bond. I, this seems a little upside down, I, and so I get your frustration because it seems like you guys are trying to drive something that really should be driven from our level down to you guys and say, you know, uh, you know, we would come to you and say, hey, we would, we would like three things this year if you guys would plan these three things for us. And we would like it to include X, Y, and Z. We have a budget of X, Y, and Z, and it can be spent. And that frees, that gives you the parameters to function freely within that right now is not there because it's, mm -hmm. it's more kind of downside driven up. And then it gets up here after you guys put a lot of planning into it and goes, no, that's not good. And so you guys feel like you're spinning the wheels. And right, but you guys get paid, we don't. And let's, so for you to come to us and say, hey, we want you to do this, no, it, this it, is my time. And well, no, 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 no. You work at the discretion of council. If they want an event, that's, that's on you guys. You can't have that mentality because you don't get paid. I'm not going to do it. You're on a parks and rec board that's approved by council. If they sit there and say, we want you to do three events, and that's a budget, that's... I think what Mr. Bond is saying is exactly what needs to be done. So does planning board work like that? That's a completely different board. It's not, even, it's not even the same. To, to, you, you, excuse you, me. Hang on. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hang on, Mr. Lindsay. It's Mr. Bond. That's, yeah. I mean, that's, that's, what, perfect. That, that's what I'm saying. It just for everything to flow and for you guys to have the freedom to function the way you need to to get something done, I think that's, that's the way it kind of needs to flow and the way it needs to be set up. Um, not yet. Uh, Mr. Bond, you're good? Okay. Mr. Vice Mayor had something I skipped over him. Go ahead, sir. You said the problem is you don't get a, a, a advice or direction. Um, none of us are in a position to give too much advice because none of us have college degrees in municipal management. There's only one person in the city that has that. And we, we rely on him quite often on what is legitimate, what is ethical, what is legal, and what is not. Correct? Yeah, but I, yeah, 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 I'll, yeah. So if we were to, if you were to start presenting the things that you want to do at a council meeting during the committee report, mm -hmm. we have someone here that knows city management. Did that last year for the Okay. Right. You I mean, I know. I mean, there was never, there was never like a council approved, like that I submitted a presentation and said, hey, this is what we want to do. And you guys have to like vote on it. And it was like, cool, Easter egg hunt. We don't um, need to vote on it. We, we gave, when we said cool Easter egg hunt, council was all in agreement. That was your approval. If one council member said, no, I don't think so, let's think about this, then it would have been made through a motion. But I thought the point was that in terms of spending the money, the council has to approve it, and does that not call for a vote, or can council the city have to Well, they already approved your budget. I think what Here's you're saying is if you come and talk about an Easter egg hunt or, you know, special events or, you know, I don't know, you want to do, I don't know, a trick-or-treat event, you go to council, you sit there and say, this is what we want to do. 
they'll sit there and you'll present a budget to them what you want to buy and they say yay or nay and it moves moves to us here, um, here, here. I'm, I'm just well i'm confused is this has got blown so out of proportion in so many ways and it just needs to be a little bit i think what mr bond said is was that the combination of mr bond and mr grimm that clears up anything i mean the board can't sit there and have complete say of what they want to do um if they want to do an easter egg hunt great my involvement was is this going to be an issue with the union are we taking away union work for the overtime hours on the saturday and sunday that was original involvement of the city manager the easter egg hunt last year i think it happened i mean people were happy i think it could be improved on and i think that's why she had the megaphone and no one again no one was complaining about the games you wanted to bring the criss the crisscross the tick tock we were just concerned about the prizes that you're giving out as a result of the easter egg hunt that is it. Everything else, everything else works. So here's what we need. We need to clarify in, in, in this document that says, you know, obviously they can come up with the right. We want to do this event during whatever the event may be during the fireworks show. They come up with that idea and they say, okay, let's go to council to make sure we don't need any sort of, you know, whatever. Just to clarify that they can do it at that area at that time. We give them their blessing. Then they, they come up with uh, whatever it is they need to purchase, megaphones, a popcorn machine, a goodie bags, whatever it may be. After their group puts that together, they come to council, they bring it to us, they can email it to us or put it in our mailbox at the city, give it to us, and just like you had said, yes, we don't always know what Colleen will let us uh, purchase or buy. Uh, it may be something that, uh, that they just don't think is going to be uh, something that's going to be popular by the auditors. So we bring their list for that new event that they want to do into a meeting. We go over it, what we think of it, and then if Colleen has a problem with what she thinks, uh, not the not the event itself, but just you know, oh, hey, why they want to buy uh, uh, fireworks for kids that are only ten years old, you know, whatever. And then she says, no, we shouldn't be doing that. The auditors, I mean, is that what we need to do? Is we need to break it down to a checklist of the procedures of what they need to do. That's exactly what you need to do. Okay. But if Colleen might have an issue with it, I might have an issue with it because I'm Colleen's boss. So right. I, all that needs to be taken into account. And that's what I'm sure. you know, kind of piggybacking off what he said. We don't always know that, that the auditors or Colleen may have an issue buying this item or that item. So, and we don't always know, like you said, you're going to have problems with the union. Right. We don't know that. I, like I said when I stated, I think if it was the Amazon purchase was more in line to what you should actually win in an Easter egg hunt contest, we wouldn't be here. But I think you all need to examine the prizes they were trying to buy, $30 that, prizes. That's that's when it got a little excessive and was weird to us. That was it. It's inflation. I mean, I, I, that's I just I don't think, think is, not to, not, to, not, to, not to add to any more argument. I think that statement, and I'm not being rude, I think is, is up to um, just, you know, discretion, it's debatable. What you think may be, I mean, because what you're saying is, is that that Colleen or you may have an issue with uh, gift number, you know, whatever, five on the lines here, which I maybe I think, well, I think that's completely suitable. I mean, there's no, if I'm understanding what you're saying, I'm trying to understand that you're saying that this particular prize just isn't something that the city should be buying. Correct? Yeah, I think it's excessive for an Easter egg prize when you have multiple $25, $35 geographic kits. Okay. That's, that's and, and here's the thing, another red flag with it, it wasn't just one. It was like five or six of them. Like, what are you going to do? With, how many? How many first place prizes do you have? So, so that that was it. So that okay, that that would come back to to so you guys, yeah. So they would bring that Amazon to you guys. You guys would go through that. Hey, why do you need that? Why do you need that? Approve it. Great. Move it on. Send it to the city building. Okay. You don't not, want to not donated prizes, things that were put on and sponsored by municipalities. And this is really not that far out of line with what a lot of other places do. Can I ask who you uh, researched? Because we're all I don't have it right off the top of my head, but I have a list at home. Can you, can you, can you, can you do that? So you did that work on behalf of the city? I'm making a public record request to get that list. No, I did that as a personal. But you did it on for the board, right? You're a board member? 
So I'm just, I was curious to know, like, where, where can we go to get that information? Because I would love to be able to. Okay. To, to hey, let's, um, okay, let's, let's stop this. Let's, let's move forward with this. Um, council, I'm going to ask down the line, uh, do you want to table this and, and, and do a little time to research? Um, I would suggest that, kind of with the trashing, you guys, I can't tell you what to do, but I would suggest that we all look into some other uh, Parks and Rec Board bylaws. She's done a good job of getting the, the main part of it going and maybe come up with what we think um, need to be added. Any uh, instructions as far as how to move forward, um, you know, how to, um, how to, you know, in detail, how to bring orders to us or give them to us so that we can discuss them in the meeting, uh, when they should, you know, you've heard it, I don't know what that is. Um, clarification, basically, on the procedure to get an event up and rolling from start to finish. And then I think that would be what they need, right? In the bylaws. So I'm going to digress here a little bit. Sure. And go back to the five members. I think we need to, uh, since we need an ordinance to change it or amend this ordinance, can we do that by a verbal motion and second, or do we need? A, an amended ordinance. You need an amending ordinance. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I would like for council to, uh, I'll make a motion to instruct the city manager to have an amended ordinance for us at the next meeting to move this from five affirmative votes, uh, five votes to five members. Members. I'm um, reading and it said votes. I got a lot. But anyway, down to two. So at least they can function. And then the other things, uh, and then after we get that, which was it a problem to have that at the next meeting? Mm -hmm. And, like and I would seat. even go as far and don't have a heart attack over here, Mr. Britt. I'm not having a heart attack. Uh, I would even go as far as making it an emergency ordinance. I just said it was <laughs> making an emergency. To make it immediate. Mm -hmm. Instead what of, did he just say? <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm okay. still on drugs. I know. So. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Because you know I don't like emergency ordinances, but to get the board moving so the ladies can do something, I think... In this case, we need to move it to, to three members, two of them to quorum, do it in an emergency ordinance so it takes effect immediately, if I'm not correct. Correct? Emergency ordinance goes into effect immediately. Mm -hmm. There's no 15-day waiting period. And so the board can get moving and have this amended ordinance at our next meeting. That's all into a motion. Did you get all that? Well, I, I mean, that just clarifies on the operator. It doesn't really guide them. Of how well, to and then we'll have to deal with the other. This, this, what I just said is just to get them so they can, can maybe function. They, I think that's pretty clear to them. They need to come to us, you know, uh, to, to get what they want or to get stuff like this approved. You know, and if we approve it, then, you know, if the auditors don't like it, we take a ding. But then we learn from that mistake and look at things a little closer the next time. But, but there is, like I said, there, there is cheaper places to get stuff than Amazon. And the next time I get a book, I'll make sure you get it. It's cook. Easter, Easter's what? 40 days away. Fall Park. I don't, I, I don't honestly think that given that time frame, given what they need to order and getting things organized, I don't think you're going to have an Easter egg gun. What do you guys think? Is that fair? You could have an Easter egg gun. You just wouldn't have it. You pulled it, how long? Right? You pulled it off in, what, two weeks last night, didn't you? It wasn't very long. Oh, no, we had far more planning. We just didn't purchase anything. So we have a motion on the floor. I'm looking for a second. Second. I have a second. You have a second, Mr. Miller. 
You got that, Mr. Birch? Second, I'm getting it now. <laughs> so the motion is for emergency ordinance next meeting to have it go down to five to three. Down, down to three, yes. From five to three, yes. That, that's the simplified version. And that would be our next meeting, what, Monday? And Mr. Cook, you second it. Okay, we call for the vote. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Cook? Yes. Mr. Uh, Lindsay? You did do it the right way, but yes. Vice Mayor Lowry? Um, I mean, Mayor Lowry. <laughs> That's fine. I'm, I'm not against it going to three. I just, I think it's going to need more time, but uh, yeah, I'll go with it. Sure, yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Okay, so it will be emergency, so you need six affirmative votes at the next meeting for that to come effective. Then it will be effective immediately, which will allow them to need five for an emergency. You need six. Need six? Mm -hmm. So you have so I'm gonna have to be a pain pills it'll be. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Can we amend the motion to say uh, um, no more than five? Yes. No, no. Cap it. What do you think is a, a good amount for your board members wise? Five would be great. If you have ten, you have ten, if you have ten, you're never going to agree. But I, but I thought in order to do this, it had to, in order for two to be a quorum, I thought it had to be. All quorum is majority of the. Of the it has capital. to be. It has to be three to be a quorum. If it's but, a five but, person. But we can put the, we can put it in the in the in the ordinance that. The uh, in the event we have uh, overwhelming interest, no more than five members it has to have a minimum of three. We can just do what we did just now. Exactly. Well, you don't want to say minimum of three because then that blocks them. that I would just say it it it, it could. Um, let me think about this and get a clear head. For, give me ten seconds. And that's something. I I will even go as far as councils are right to give Mr. Bridge a little leeway in coming up with the wording on this. So we can go from from three be five. to to five if we have an overwhelming, you know, a bus of people comes in. We so just pass another ordinance. Well, we can do that too. Yeah. yeah. If that happens, we can just do another ordinance. So just leave it standing the way it is. Three. Yes, sir. And okay. then and well, then, all you have to do is say uh, minimum of three members, not to exceed five, for quorum purposes. Three uh, uh, threes are standard. That way, it'll give them a yeah. list. Cool. So I can work that, on that. That, 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 that way, it'll save the legislative process. We don't get anything through through Jake again, and they're not exceeding five. That'll work. Do you need another motion for that, to amend the motion? No. Is, is the Parks and Rec Board okay with that? Say yes. Say I mean, yes. Count, I mean, I guess it really is council. Say, yeah. Say that again. So it'd be something along the lines of it's not going to be verbatim, minimum of three, not to exceed five, Quorum measurements are based off a three-member board. That way, a three-member board, a quorum is two. Right. What if, I mean, it already says the quorum shall consist of a majority. I'll keep majority. it like that. The quorum shall, well, that, we have to dictate majorities. What's your majority off of? Majority five? Because then it's, then it's three. Right. So you gotta but if you have five, then three is a good. You want it to be. But we, we would have to amend it again. If they have five members, then we have to amend it to where it's a quorum of five, not a quorum of three. We'll just keep it simple. We'll keep it three and worry about it. Yeah, just keep it simple and we'll fix it later right. if we have to. Good kiss. We'll All right. Anything else? Keep it yes. simple as two. Sir. I just want you two to know that I really appreciate what you do. We are not allowed to be. Council does not have a vote on a board. We can visit. We can only we can advise. Attend, but we cannot be members. Okay. And, and as far and as I, us advising, you can call any of us to ask our opinion on anything. Well, there's one that I doubt we can definitely That's what. Hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Did you finish? No. Mr. Vice Mayor, back to you, sir. Um, like I said, I appreciate what you guys do. You work your butts off. 
just for the love of it. And I appreciate that. You say you want direction, but I never heard anything from you guys. You have all of our email addresses. Um, what? Okay. Um, if you have something you want to do, email it to us. Come up and bring it up at the uh, committee reports. If Mr. Bridge finds anything objectionable, we'll know right away. Um, so we can say, yeah, you guys are doing a good job. Go ahead with it. Okay. We don't need to vote to approve yeah. things that you do. You are an extension of the city council. You do have some authority. If I'm incorrect, please let me know. Yeah, they don't really have authority. I mean, what's in their bylaws, but I mean, ultimately, you guys have the authority. They have I need the authority to the budget. Mm -hmm. I need a motion to excuse Mr. Roadblock. So maybe. Oh. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Mr. Bond. And I was going to do that as soon as he quit talking. Oh, okay. <laughs> Who was the first and second? Mr. Lindsay was your motion, and second was Mr. Bond. Excuse Mr. Mm, Councilman Cook? Yes. Yes. Um, yes. 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 <laughs> okay, I still got a call for the vote. <laughs> Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. No, you promised me a birthday cake. Ben Bond. <laughs> Councilman Bond, I'm sorry. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. I think we're confused and we just start saying yes. Mr. Mayor, move to adjourn. Second. No, you didn't confuse me. There's a procedure you got to go through. So. <laughs> Mr. Lindsay's your motion to um, adjourn. Thank you, adjourn. <laughs> and Ms. Eggleston is your second. Second. No, Mr. Cook. Oh, Page. 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 Yes. Uh, Councilman yes. Cook. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. We're adjourned. Have a good evening, everyone. <laughs>